Well, you know, the EU is not so much different than, than other markets. Um, um, organic is still a very important trend in, in Europe. So is health and sustainability. And um, you can also say that the, the whole wave about technology, you know, combined with the food, since the world is becoming more digital, that also refers to the products in so far that um, if, you know, if there are shopping apps, if there are um, barcodes on the products um, and maybe referring to a website with, with recipe, um, you know, the younger consumer that goes shopping with a smartphone, uh, that, that always gives a benefit. And then uh, the organic industry in Europe is one uh, of the most uh, booming ones. And, um, you know, the, the market rose by approximately 6% last year, and it has a value of almost 23 billion euros. As always, you know, innovative products are us are thought after and um, your product should have just some some unique feature you know it can be it can be t uh, I mean it, it can be a special flavor it can be a special packaging but because um, you know the the most the more standard products you know like like peanut butter um, marshmallows, popcorn, they have already penetrated the market, you know, and, and some, some, some barbecue sauces are there too. And, and, you know, for example, Germany is, um, you know, they, they are really the, the, the champions in, in barbecue. Uh, so not only in soccer. Um, <laughs> so, so, you know, if you have a special sauce or hot sauces, that that is always combined with the US and and the Europeans like that but you know you have to you have to stick out and you have to have something special if we talk about the innovative uh, you know food sector uh, from like last year it's also it also includes dairy products uh, ready made meals uh, soft drinks uh, frozen uh, savory products biscuits um, and condiments and sauces. If you look at some of the smaller markets in Europe, you know, as we, as they are being built up, you know, getting more export ready, uh, I mean import ready for uh, USA food products, uh, they still depend on on importers, you know, from Germany or from the Netherlands. So. Um, you know that that means that for the time being you know y you have to go through these channels and sometimes if you have a an importer you know in in the Benelux or in in Germany that importer can help you to get into that other markets while these markets will mature I'm pretty sure that um, you know and 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 bringing buyers um, to the U.S. on these, you know, buyers mission that are being organized, that, that helps, you know, but, um, and, you know, we, we just like on this recent buyer mission, we have, uh, we have a, a buyer here from the Baltics, um, but, you know, he's going to need some assistant in consolidation uh, to get the products over so that, you know, that he can save some costs so he will be competitive once the products are being brought to his market. The discussions were for the TTIP uh, have gone into the sixth round and there's still a long way to go. Um, I mean, both parties are far from reaching an agreement because the, the public pressure is growing. Um, if it comes to effect, you know, this trade alliance would cover 50% of global economics and 30% of global trade. So it is huge. Um, the goals of the agreement, let me just like, you know, it's maybe, um, it's apparent, but it, it will um, reduce the, the custom duties for the imports from the U.S. to, to Europe, which is very important for the, uh, for the you know, American exporters. Uh, and as well the other way around. 
So in the recent presented quote, you know, of this uh, negotiations, the EU, the EU offers a 96% decrease of import levies uh, for U.S. product, which is which is major. You know, it's almost everything goes. Um, a significant aspect for the industry would be the de uh, deregulation of the technical trade barriers to si uh, to simplify the international trade and um, reducing transatlantic bureaucracy. Um, the economic forecast uh, says for the EU that this can be, um, you know, a growth of a hundred billion in 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 exports from the EU to the US. Um, we don't have any figures what that would mean for the US, but it has to be for the USA, but it has to be huge as well. Okay, the the TTIP also targets for an open regulation for international commissioning. This in this is intended to make sure that a foreign company has the same chance to get an official order approved as local competitors. So uh, all in all, uh, you know, we have we have some way to go, but um, especially in the industries, there is, um, you know, there is a big uh, positive uh, thought for, for this. According to a recently public, published study, by the Confederation of the German uh, Food Industry, the BVE, and the consulting agency uh, PWC, 87 percent of the in of the interviewed um, industry representative expect growing exports and product better trade conditions, and are you know and and are uh, positive, um, especially small and mid-sized companies with less than 100 employees hope to profit from this trade partnership um, um, as well as an increase in um, in sales and and the savings that they will have because of you know reduction of, of duties etc 40% um, of the interviews interviewed companies are hoping for new innovative appeals also should say that the general opinion is somewhat um, divided because um, the the consumer Pro protection commissioners and the groups they um, they are against the TTIP because they really fear that um, that the European uh, food safety laws um, GMO cloned animals hormonal treated meat um, you know that that they will be weakened and and um, and there is still a big GMO fear in in Europe. Very clear that the EU does not want GMO to enter the Union. The, the answer will be twofold uh, because um, you have Sweden, you know, with almost 10 million inhabitants. It is a popular choice for companies uh, to look for distribution in the Nordics because Sweden often, you know, covers um, also, you know, Denmark or Finland. Um, and it's, it's, it's a gateway to Europe, you know. Some Swedish importers then might again re-import to the Baltics you know, or have been traditionally. So, um, so the, the company, uh, the, the country itself, Sweden, they, they benefit from having some multinational distribute, distribution headquarters, both in the food and the non-food area. Um, Sweden's uh, economy is also gradually recovering, um, you know, from some of the economic um, uh, challenges that we've had and the GDP growth is expected to further grow in 2014 and 2015. It has already been positive in, in, in the past year. Um, so, you know, um, there, there's, Sweden is a good, is a good mar so, and solid market, but then you should also not underestimate that, um, you know, that the, the programs that food export has have shown have shown its um, result because Swedish buyers were brought to um, to the Midwest uh, for for a buyer's mission. They met with companies here. 
uh, they got excited about the products and they enlarged their um, their portfolio with U.S. products. Um, Norway um, is is part of the European economic area, but they also profit, you know, from being close to the uh, EU legisla uh, legislation. And um, it's also a country that, that does import a lot of products. And I think in, in all the Nordic states, the, um, uh, there's a bigger openness to international products. And, you know, uh, and, and the USA has a major part in that. So U.S. products are thought after. FAS Europe is fully aware of the problematic situation regarding composed products. Special certificates are required for food products containing more than 50% of animal origin. And that, you know, for example, 50% dairy or 50% egg or 50% fish or combined 30% dairy and 20% egg. If the 50% limit is exceeded, an export certificate is needed. But now here comes the problem. The certificate for the egg component is issued by a different office than the uh, certificate for the dairy component uh, or the fish component. Um, the EU requires one certificate, which not two or three ones. So that's a catch-22. Um, but, you know, f from experience and just a recent example and talking to the Dutch authorities because um, a lot of the products come through Rotterdam, which is the biggest, you know, uh, harbor in, in for the EU, um, the authorities will accept two or three different certificates if they relate to each other. Um, but it seems to be impossible from the EU side, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it seems to be impossible from the US side to do that. So in all these individual cases of shipments, um, you know, to the member countries of the EU, we should not forget the human factor. Some border officials might be willing to accept these multiple certificates if they relate to each other, others not. So you cannot count on it. There's no guarantee that a border control that has let through one or two shipments before will do it again. Um, and I really fear that this is an issue which, will, which requires many more months for a solution. You should definitely look to your importer and, um, you know, I would also re recommend that maybe you, you, you download the GAIN report um, and, and, and read that. And you have to be aware that, you know, FAS office in Brussels is, is working on these issues with the EU authorities to find a solution. But there is no solution right now. Well, I think, um, you know, first of all, uh, Food Export offers excellent uh, programs to, to approach the markets and um, to learn first before you sell. Um, I think, um, you know, you can, you can participate in, in buyer's mission here, you can go on focus trade missions, you can use programs like, like the market scan to find out um you know how a market could or will react to your product before you start uh, investing more um you know the, the still um i think that it's it's probably normal for an exporter to start looking at the the bigger markets in the eu first which is germany um and and france um, and the UK, and you know, also keep in mind that there's no language barrier with the UK. But then, um, you know, it shouldn't be underestimated. Um, 
the, the, the potential that are in the new markets. And there's a reason why there is um, the first focused trade mission uh, to Poland and also to, to Turkey this, this year. Because like even Turkey not being part of the EU, but uh, you know it, it it is part of the the services that food export offers now. There is just uh, for example for for Turkey, you know they there's a lot of juices are an opportunity, um, sauces and and condiments and it doesn't matter which market you are going to in the EU, you will have. To work with a specialized uh, importer because the um, first of all you know you have your specialty stores uh, that are interested in having uh, USA origin products and then uh, you have the retailers and the retailers will not mess with you know the whole import process uh, checking the labeling uh, that's why you know there are companies that that do that for um, and and offer this service. So you have to find the right importer, and you can find this importer also through the services that Food Export offers with their in-country representative, um, and you can go to to trade shows. So um, you know what I what I said earlier that refers to. Um, to to processed um, to processed food products, uh, but like um, when it comes to the private labor label sector, um, you know there's also European processors and manufacturers that are looking for for those products, and there are specialized um, shows like like the PLMA that you have here in the U.S. There's a, a counterpart in Amsterdam, and um, you can also say that most of the, you know, actually every um, European retailer has um, has at least one or multiple private labels to to stay competitive. So, um, you know, this is also an option for the U.S. Um, suppliers, for the U.S. exporters to look into that. It's a promising market. There's going to be a new regulation um, that will replace the ex the current labeling ruling, and it will apply from December 13th, 2014, with some exceptions, like always. Uh, but the purpose of this new EU food regulation um, is to make food labeling easier to understand for the consumers by simplifying and streamlining current uh, legislation on general food and nutritional la labeling, you know, into one single EU regulation, because that hasn't been like that. So the areas that are covered is that you're going to have to highlight allergens, uh, nano ingredients, and imitation foods, as well as present the nutritional information on, on pack. So um, the bulk of these requirements will come into full effect in 2014, um, but it will become mandatory in 2016. So there is some, some time to adapt to that. And the best bet here also is to, you know, consult with your importer on this uh, because they are the specialists and, and, and they need to know that because they're going to be legally as an importer, they're going to be legally responsible for what's being said on the package that they will put into, uh, you know, th that they will put out for EU consumers. So the new regulation uh, includes mandatory um, nutritional information for processed food, the, the big five, you know, that, that, that you know, uh, the minimum font, font sizes for display, uh, tighter provisions like um, re regarding misleading product descriptions and a stricter place of origin rule uh, on the packaging. But that's also somewhat a benefit because, um, you know, uh, you can be, if, if people are looking for products from the U.S., it should be said that they're from the U.S. And it can be um, 
uh, a positive aspect, you know, when you compare it to some of the food scandals that, that there were in other parts of the world. The USA has a very good reputation for, you know, high standards of, um, of food safety. Thank you. That's it.